Hey friends, it's Simon Hurley from Inclips. Welcome to tonight's live stream. If you guys are joining, um, again, this is a live stream, so I'll be looking over here so I can see everybody's comments who is participating live. And if you are a replay viewer, hello. Thank you for watching and stopping by. Today I wanted to do something really fun and go over some card making supplies that I absolutely love but didn't quite think that I needed right in the beginning. And um, I actually did a card making supplies video with all of my favorite supplies, but this video will be focused mainly on the supplies that I didn't really think that I needed or something that I might have bought and then not quite liked and then bought something else. So I wanna give all of my tips and advice on things that I absolutely love and why I love them. And then hopefully that will help you guys, whether you're new or looking at supplies or kind of haven't really decided on some things, hopefully this will help you to, to pick up the things that you love. So, hey everybody, um, I'm so excited for you all to be joining here, thank you. Um, so it's really important for me to do this because at the beginning I bought like 10 different paper trimmers and they all sit back there and I don't use any of them except for one and so kind of going through some of my favorite things hopefully will help you guys decipher what you need and not waste your money on anything you don't want. Awesome. Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining. It's really awesome to have you all here. And then of course, all the products will be linked down below in the description. Um, you can find all the product links there. So if you want to go shopping and also if you use code Simon20 at rangerinc.com, um, some of the supplies that I'm sharing in today's video are theirs and I do work with them. It's not a sponsored thing. They just have really nice quality stuff. Um, and I used most of it before I even started working with them. So if you do want to purchase anything from them, um, Simon20 at Ranger Inc is going to give you 20% off, which is really awesome. Okay. Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining today's video. So let's turn down to my work surface and I'll share with you some of my favorite tools. Okay, so let's start out with something that I completely didn't think that I needed. And that is a scoring board and a Teflon bone folder. Here I have two different types that I have tried. One is a little bit smaller and one is a little bit larger. And really I don't have too much of a preference on either one of these. But I have links down below where I bought my Teflon bone folders. I didn't link to Amazon or anything because I don't know what those are like because I haven't tried them. But these are the ones that I like. I've linked them down below. Um, and these are super helpful. And I totally didn't think I needed this. In fact, I have used the little bone folder that came with this for a long time. But it's definitely not good. So you, you're going to want a scoring tool because with cardstock, instead of just taking the piece of cardstock and creasing it like this, um, that's going to kind of rip the paper or give like weird marks on the inside of your card and not look too great, which isn't always good. So you're going to want a scoring tool. And there's my dogs. <laughs> they always bark. <laughs> so here you're going to want a scoring tool because that's going to help crease the cardstock and break the fibers before you crease. So I'm using the Teflon bone folder and let's go in here. I'm going to score right at five and a half because this is a top folding card. And I cut it out of black cardstock so you guys can see the difference in today's video. So when you do this, I've got corrected on this quite a few times, you actually flip the cardstock and it's much easier to fold it down. And then I keep it on here so I can press it against the edge and get a nice straight edge and then crease it down. And let me show you, here's the difference. So look at this. That's a perfectly smooth card. It didn't affect the cardstock. You've got a really nice crease on there, right? But now let's look at one that I folded using the tool, I mean using the tool that came with the crease or the scoreboard, sorry. It makes a nice crease still, but look on the outside. Where I was using the regular tool, you just press it against the surface, it creates this like shiny mark. And I'm not sure if it's, you know, that junky plastic kind of rubbing off on the cardstock, but it totally changes the appearance. So using a Teflon bone folder is important to get a nice crease card without any marks on the outside of your cardstock, which I really like. It's especially apparent on dark card cardstock colors, and it's really just kind of annoying if you've spent a ton of time on the card and it ends up having those little marks on it. So it's a little bit of an investment, but it's a tool you'll have for a long time as well as the scoreboard. You can tell mine is nice and beaten up. And this has a couple different creases and kind of marks in it as well from being used and worn over time. But trust me, the investment is worth it on these. Um, they are a little bit of an investment, but they don't make those marks, which is really nice and helpful. So let me set these off to the side and they can move on to the next tool. Awesome, you're working on stamping images while hanging out with me. Well, that's so cool. Um, 
So I heard some of you guys say the Teflon bone folder is on your wish list. Um, it's definitely one of the must have items for me. I didn't realize that I needed it at the beginning and then I purchased one and it's totally a game changer because you don't get those annoying little marks on your cards, which is no fun. So definitely put that on your little Christmas wish list or birthday list um, or save up a little bit of money for it and you can have that nice investment. It's definitely a tool, so it'll last you a long time. Okay, so let's move on to the next thing. And this one, again, was really a huge game changer for me. And this is the Misty Stamping Tool. Now I'm going to recommend, yep, okay, Tracy said, yeah, it's one of the best tools ever, I agree. Okay, so this is the Misty Stamping Tool. And this, kind of everybody knows about this, but I like the larger Misty Stamping Tool and would totally recommend that because you can use the wreath builder in here. I actually have a video on that, so I'll link it after the live stream here. And also, you can use different like Concord and Ninth background stamps in here and my 6x6 background stamps because everything is going to fit really nicely in this Misty. So if you're going to buy a Misty, I recommend investing a couple extra dollars to get the larger one rather than the smaller one. Um, you can still definitely travel with it and um, it's really nice and compact, but this has really changed my life as a stamper. I like this one because of the thin plastic here. It's a little bit bendable. I've never had any problems with mine breaking. Um, you know, treat your tools nicely. But the nice part about that is when you're pressing down, you can see there's a little bit of give in it. So as I put an image in here to stamp and I ink it up, I'm gonna make sure that I get my whole image inked by being able to press it all down. And I love the thin surfaces like that. But this Misty, being able to stamp several times in one place also helps a lot as well. So I'll link to some videos on screen after the live here about the Misty that I've done. But another thing that I really like to do with this is I take this and I'll, I'll link to another video that I did this too. But I put my stamp set right in here. And then I bring in a piece of, or two pieces of tape and I'll tape it at the top and bottom and also the sides to make sure because my stamp sets, this is my Mythical Mermaid stamp set. They're huge, they are six by nine. So we actually gave one extra inch of stamp set, which is really fun. But one of the things that I don't love is taking all of the images out and then stamping all of them and then having to put them all back. Well, with this, you can take your ink, put a piece of cardstock in here Take your ink, ink this all up, and then you can stamp it down. And if it doesn't stamp perfectly, stamp it again. And then you clean this all off and you can pull it off of here. I learned that trick, or actually I kind of came up with that trick a long time ago. I shared it in one of my life hack videos and you all seem to love it, but I wanted to reiterate it. This is really helpful with the Misty stamping tool. That's one of my favorite uses for it actually, but it's honestly made me a better stamper. I'm not amazing at stamping, and so this has really helped me out over time if I didn't stamp the image perfectly, and there's also tons of tips as well. Awesome, so you guys have all three sizes and they rock, yeah, definitely. So I have links down below this size if you want to look into it. And I also have these blue tape stripes. It actually comes with pink, but I took my pink ones off and then I just taped these down. So I like that blue color. They also have white, but I love this fun little teal color. It's a little bit more masculine, which I think is cool. Okay, so along the same lines with stamping, let me move this off to the side. Along the same exact lines with stamping, I want to share my favorite acrylic blocks. And this is something that I didn't know at the beginning and kind of wish that I did know because nobody had really told me. I bought a ton of random acrylic blocks and to be honest, I only use a few of them now. Let me show you why. So one thing, this is all personal preference by the way, I wanted to share that as well because some people love these thick acrylic blocks. But I found that these actually made me worse of a stamper. If you find that you're not getting great images when stamping with an acrylic block that's really thick, you're going to want to look into maybe getting a thinner acrylic block. Now there are ones that are even thinner than this, but I actually like this size better. There are some that are like half the size of this, which I'm not in love with. I kind of dropped those. But this one is the perfect thickness for me. I was actually at Ranger the other day. I was getting some teaching supplies and we were out in New Jersey doing some work with them. And they brought me this acrylic block. They were like, why not use this for classes? And I was like, I have never tried this before. I was a little bit nervous about it at first, but honestly, it's one of my favorite acrylic blocks now. And I use it basically every single time. And I have a couple of these. And the reason why is because it's a little bit thinner, you can see. So it's not this like chunk of acrylic. So it's a little bit easier to get pressure on certain points of your stamp and make sure that you're going to actually get the center of your stamp inked, which is really awesome. So 
This is why I like the thinner acrylic blocks. I find they're not too much of a trouble to hold. They're not super heavy, so you're not gonna drop them, which I really like. And again, the pressure thing is a huge thing for me. That's why I love the Missy stamping tool too, because it has that thinner lid. But it's all about personal preference. Maybe you wanna give this a try, and it's got a great price point too, since it's that thinner acrylic as well, so you can buy a couple of them. You like the thick ones, yeah. Joanne, it's all personal preference. So I found that the thick ones don't work for me, but I know they work for a lot of people because they got those little divots. So just kind of trying them out. But one of the things with me that worked is these thinner ones. And definitely I still use the thicker ones for smaller images, but if I'm using a larger image, I find that the center doesn't get stamped if I'm not using a thinner one. So I like this one a lot. Have I ever used the Rocket Blocks? Um, yes, I have used them and I haven't found much success with them. I find that sometimes I press too hard at some areas and not the others. Um, I know that a lot of people like them though. Awesome, you're making cards for your local hospital. That's so much fun. Um, sometimes I donate to um, different hospitals or um, different nursing homes I brought some cards to, which was really fun. Um, it's good to get rid of some cards if you're not gonna use them all because I make tons and tons and give them to a good cause and people who are gonna love them. Okay, so let's move on to the next thing. Um, this is, I'm kind of, okay, also, I'm kind of going out of order. Everything's just scattered around here, but we'll get to everything in the end. So it's all linked down below, kind of in a random order as well. Um, but this is the Distress Sprayer. And at first, I definitely thought that a sprayer wasn't really necessary to get. I just had really cheap ones from the dollar store, but I recommend investing, you know, whatever, like $5 this is, to get a nice spray bottle. The cool part about this is it has a locking mechanism on it, so look right there. This means that it's locked and it's not gonna spray at all, so if you like to travel, it's not gonna spray your water out. If you unlock it, it's gonna give a nice, oh, I just sprayed that at my laptop. <laughs> um, but if you unlock it, it gives a really nice mist as well. So I really like the Distress Sprayer for my projects because it has different kind of spraying settings. So let me share with you guys here. I'm just going to take one of my ink pads. This is the Simon Hurley Create Bee Sting ink pad. So these are my water-based inks. And one thing with these that I really like is I'm just going to, <laughs> there's my dog. I'm just going to spread a little bit of color over top and this one is really juicy. It's a new ink pad. So I've just added a little bit of color to my surface for demonstration um, purposes. And here I'm gonna show kind of why I like this. Because you can get a really nice thin mist and you can barely even see that it misted over top there, which I really like. So it's just a great way to kind of mist over top of a whole project to get maybe a watercolor effect on a stamp. But then if you just, kind of pull that trigger just a tiny bit and it takes a little bit of getting used to, you can get little blobs. So instead of having to flick your water on and not have too much control, you have tons of control with this one with the little bursts of spray that you can add, which I really love. I love this one because of that. You can create, you know, bigger puddles with it if you want, but I love that fine mist that it has. You can do it over top of a project or you can get those fun little drip effects. So this is definitely worthwhile. I love this. Um, and I use these in classes as well. And a lot of people seem to absolutely love the sprayer with the trigger that you can control. So you've got a lot more control than just a regular spray bottle, which I love. And so a lot of these things are, you know, things that you could definitely buy other versions of, which I definitely have. And then after purchasing a version that worked a little bit better for me, I wanted to share that with you guys because even with that whole sprayer thing, I bought a couple different sprayers maybe from the dollar store and I found that now whatever I'm spraying, I fill it up in that bottle and I use that bottle all the time because this gives you tons of control, which I love on my project. So even a spray bottle, which is kind of uncontrollable, this is a lot easier to control. Awesome, okay, yep. Tracy says, the Distress Sprayer is great. Can't believe all the items you didn't think you needed, but you got them. Awesome, that's so great. You have the Mini Misty, perfect. Okay, so let me turn down to the surface again and let's keep going on my projects, or products, sorry. In that same realm of water media, I wanna share something that I've kind of learned over time and you know wanted to share with you guys. So one thing that I've always been in love with is water brushes, but I always wondered why I didn't have a ton of control on my projects and kind of struggled a little bit with watercoloring. And I always recommended this, but now I might be changing my ways just a little bit. Um, I recently started using 
um, paint brushes. This, this is just like a cheap pack of artist brushes, and I believe it even comes with more, I'm not quite sure, from Ranger. Um, but it's got a ton of different sizes, so you got really fine point ones, bigger ones for making backgrounds. But one thing that I really wanted to share is just the amount of control you have. So I usually use this larger brush here. Awesome. Could you spray the Distress Spray on the desk and then pull the card with the color on top to add more blotches? Yeah, you definitely can. Um, you can kind of smoosh it in between there to get more blotches for sure. So with this, I actually just use my desk as a surface. A lot of people ask why I put the inks right on my desk. And the reason is, is just because it looks good on camera, it's that wood surface. But it's not really wood, it's actually a laminate, so it resists it. I'm not encouraging anybody to put any ink on their desks, and actually I'll show later why you're not supposed to. But I do it because it just looks a little bit better, it's easier to film for all of you. So that's why. So you'll see me here, I'm going to take the Bee Sting ink. And I just make a little bit of a palette on my desk. Awesome, there's 140 of you watching. That's so cool. Um, be sure to share this video if you want as well, if you find that anybody else, uh, any of your friends would like to see it as well. So the thing that I like about this is you can either put a water puddle off to the side, which I usually do, or you can put it right in your inks to control the amount of water that you have. And then your brush isn't always putting out water. I'll add a little bit more water to the side. I find that using quite a bit of water helps so you can clean your brush in there, add a little bit more water, but I find that I get tons more control using this than having to squeeze the water brush every once in a while and get too much water and then get not enough water sometimes. So this has been super helpful to just use the regular brush. And I wanted to mention there is a time and place for everything. When I'm on the go, I don't want to mess with water. I use the water brush 100%. But if I'm in my craft room, I definitely now prefer the just regular brushes, but it's totally personal preference. Um, have fun kind of playing around with different things and brushes aren't too expensive. So um, definitely kind of play around with what you like. But I found recently that these paint brushes, they're not even like super high quality paint brushes, but they're really nice and I honestly break brushes. So I like having brushes that I don't have to spend $20 on and worry about, you know, too much. Um, they're just a nice set of different size brushes that work really well for some fun watercolor effects. And I love the control you can get with them. So let's move on. These brushes keep moving up and down now. So let me just wipe off my surface and we can move on to the next item. Such a vibrant color. Thank you, Elizabeth. Yeah, these are my um, inks from the Simon Hurley Create line. And if you want to purchase them, um, you can go over to Ranger Ink and use the code SIMON20 for 20% off of your purchase, which is awesome. Okay, actually, Trudy, I don't break brushes, but like sometimes I find that they get stained or um, sometimes like the bristles kind of spread out too much if they've been sitting like in a wrong place. So I don't like break the brushes, like snap them in half, but like sometimes I replace them with newer ones after I've used them for a long, long time. So not having like $20 ones that I have to look after, that's kind of what I'm talking about there. Um, so I don't break the brushes. Awesome. Okay. So let's move on to the next item. Let's talk about this. So this is a sand eraser by Mano, or Tombow Mano. Um, it's a really kind of inexpensive item, but it's really nice to have. You can pick it up for, what, two or three dollars on Amazon, I think, um, which is super awesome. One thing that I love about this item, let me show you here. He is wild with his brushes. Yes, I am. <laughs> okay, so let me just bring in, let's do this here. I'll take a little bit of clear skies, and sometimes I find that when I'm working, sometimes you get little inky fingers here and there on your projects, and that absolutely stinks. If you are like far in a project and you have these, that stinks, you don't want to start over. Um, you want to have something to kind of get that out, and this is a great thing to do just that. So this is called a sand eraser by Tombow Mano. Let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see this a little bit better. So here we have those little splotches that I showed you, and I want to get rid of those. So all I need to do is just go in here with my sand eraser. You can be pretty rough with it too, and just kind of erase that surface. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna kind of scratch away at your ink mark. Now, I mean, if you have like really dark ink marks, it's not gonna like take it away 
perfectly. Sometimes you can still see them a little bit. I'm going to be realistic here. I see some people using this thing and, and acting like their mark just like completely disappeared. If it's tiny, it will. But if you have a larger mark like that, it'll just make it quite a bit less noticeable, which I really like. And if you really do work at it, you can kind of get rid of it. Sometimes I find that the surface is a little bit rough after. And then I just take like a regular eraser and it just kind of helps smooth down that surface. So just going in there and you can see that that really did help. It got almost rid of that one and pretty much got rid of that one. Um, and it really just makes it a little bit easier to not see that mark, especially if your card is done and um, you know, you don't want to remake the whole card. So. This is a little bit of a lifesaver with that mono sand eraser. So definitely a good purchase and it's not too expensive either. And honestly, I've only had to buy one. This thing lasts for a long time. You use this all the time. Yes, definitely. Oh my gosh. I think I use this one a ton as well. This might be my most used tool. Um, just because I make so many mistakes and Sometimes I don't always show them, but this sand eraser really helps to get them off. Um, if you get like a whole blob of ink on your surface, you might have to cover that up with some sequins. This thing isn't like a miracle worker. <laughs> like if you have a really dark blob of black ink that's seeped into the surface, it might not do the job. But if it's just like a little bit of fingerprint that was right on the surface of the cardstock, this will usually do it for you. Awesome. Let's move on to the next item. This one I wanted to share because a lot of people, I've shared this in the past and a lot of people absolutely loved it. So this is gonna be kind of a weird way to share it, but I don't really have anything to show really right now, but I'll just rip off a little piece of cardstock and let's say we wanted to adhere this with a piece of foam tape on our cardstock. This is more of a specialty item. I have my regular foam tape that I use all the time, but if you have a card where you want clear foam tape or if you don't love it when you turn the card and you see that foam tape underneath, this is the item for you. So I'm just going to go in here. I'll grab my scissors. You do want to cut this one instead of ripping it because it's kind of a weird, I don't know how to explain it, but it's a, a weirder surface than just regular foam tape where you can just rip it right off. So it's this clear, almost like silicone foam tape. This is from Ranger and it's a thinner tape. And then all I'm going to do is put that right onto my piece there. You can actually kind of like stretch it out on your surface, which I think is cool. So a little bit goes a long way with it. And then I'll take this and place it right down onto my card. And look, especially if you have a black card, it's much harder to see that one. Like that's not like an eyesore. Whereas if you had it on a piece of black card stock and you turned it over and you had white foam underneath there, it's not really a great look. So this is super awesome to kind of not be a huge eyesore. Of course, I still use my regular foam tape, but this one is super helpful. If you just have like a darker color card stock or you don't want to see it, if you don't love that look when you turn over the card and you can see all the foam tape, this hides it a little bit more. Of course, you can still see it, but it's that translucent color, which I love. Yes, definitely. Another thing on your wish list. Me too. When I first saw it, I was kind of surprised. I was like, oh, I don't know about, I don't know about this one. But again, once I started using it, I loved it. And it's more of a specialty item, like I said, but I'll definitely go through this stuff. Um, and again, linked down below. It's in the letterate line, um, but it's a really awesome foam tape. Okay, so let's move on to the next item. Let's see here. What haven't I gone? Okay, so let's go over this. This I haven't shared yet. Let's use the bad cardstock that we use, <laughs> that bad bone folder on. So I wanted to share this. This is the Thermo Web Tape Runner. This is a permanent tape runner, and I absolutely love this one. Now, some tape runners that I've used in the past, um, the foam tape, I think it's just called Clear Foam. Um, you can find it in the supplies list down below. Um, and you can also use code SIMON20 for 20% off of this and anything else in your Ranger order. So, um, I have used tape runners in the past that don't have a ton of tape in them, so it's not too great. But this one has a lot of tape in it, which I love because you don't have to keep refilling it all the time. And also, it's really easy to put the refills in. First of all, they sell refills. Some companies don't sell refills for their tape runners. I don't absolutely love that because then you have to throw away all this plastic. And that's kind of a little bit of a waste. So I love this one that you can buy refills for it. And also it has like this pivot on it. So one thing that I love about this pivot is you can go all the way around your card without even having to lift it up, which I think is fun. There's no like strings of glue, 
which is really awesome. But if you want to go around something, you totally can. And not most tape runners can do that. But what if this is the live right now? <laughs> yep, this is live. Awesome. So one thing that I also love about this is I love the solid adhesive. I find that it sticks a little bit better, but this really is a nice permanent adhesive. I find that once I stick it down, it's nice and stuck on that cardstock. Like, I mean, you can still peel it apart, especially right after. <laughs> so I'll give it a little bit of time, but like this stuff is really nice and stuck. And of course your recipient is not going to try to peel apart your card, but I'm doing it right now and it's just ripping the stuff, but it's a really nice strong bond on there. Of course, if you want to remove this, one thing that I like to do is I'll heat up the surface to reheat that adhesive and then it's much easier to peel up if you did make a mistake, but this stuff sticks really nicely and I love that there's tons of it in here. It's super easy to refill. Um, and it's one of my favorite tape runners. So there's a ton of tape runners on the market. It's all personal preference, but this one has been awesome for me. Awesome. You just switched. Oh, you used to use an ATG gun. You just switched more tape for shorter rolls. Yeah, I love this. Um, I don't love the huge um, tape guns. I find that those are a little bit hard to store, hard to hold, um, but I love this one. It's really easy to hold and add adhesive onto your card, which I just love. Okay, looks like we're gonna block. <laughs> awesome. Which tape runner is this? This is the Thermo Web Tape Runner. Sorry, did I forget to mention that? Yes, I definitely think it'll work for lefties. I mean, it's not really like a, it can kind of go both. I don't think it's really designed either way. There's just a logo on here, but you could totally go either way. Awesome, I'm going to make one of you guys, Trudy, I'll make you a moderator and then you can remove any comments. So any comments that are bad, <laughs> just try to remove those out of there. Um, but I love this tape runner for all of my crafting needs. Okay, so let's move on to the next item. What else did I have left? Okay, here we go. I don't know if I had these linked, but I'll link them after the live stream. Um, these are some of my favorite things to use. Now, sequins and stuff were one of the things that I didn't think that I needed um, when I started card making, but I do want to recommend a couple. You don't need to fill your whole collection with sequins right away. And you guys might already have a huge collection of sequins, but here are my favorite three types of sequins that I use a lot on my cards. These I love. These are either from Studio Katia, Pretty Pink Posh. You can kind of shop lots of different places, but I love the mix of clear or iridescent sequins. Those are some of my favorites. I also love the gems that are iridescent. These I use a ton as like bubbles and things like that. And then of course the clear bubbles in different sizes I use all the time. So. These are the three that I use a ton and absolutely love in the end. Awesome. Do you not see the supplies? Did I not link them? Oh, Simon. Okay, maybe I have it linked. I can't quite see it right now. I can't see the supplies right now, but after the stream, come right back and then I'll have all the supplies linked for you guys. Um, but I can try, actually I don't have it open right now, but I'll try to get them linked after the stream for all of you. I wanna keep it kind of quick here. Okay, so let's move on to the next item. There's just a couple more, is scissors. And these are something that I didn't think that I needed. I bought these a little bit into my crafting journey, but I've absolutely fallen in love with these. These actually made my cutting a lot better. And these are the Fiskars Spring Assist Scissors. So what I absolutely love about these is that they are that spring assist. And I found that my hands don't get as tired with these. If you have problems with your hands and cutting things right now with scissors, I find that some scissors you can kind of get tired of after a while. I absolutely love these and I'll talk about these in a second, but I don't use them for too much fussy cutting. If I'm cutting out little images or doing detail cutting, I always use these Fiskars spring assisted scissors. They're not too expensive. They're a tool that'll last you a long time. I believe this is a titanium blade too, which is really awesome. They're nice and sharp, but then they lock like this. So they're super compact, 
but that spring really helps you out and not having like a place where your fingers are restricted I like as well so that really helps me with fussy cutting you have these and love them too yeah Krista these are some of my favorite scissors definitely Oh, that's so awesome, Sherry. I'm so glad. I love when um, kids start getting into crafting as well because it's a lot of fun and I, I think a lot of people are missing out. So these are the Tim Holtz and Tonic scissors. Now mine have gunk on them because um, I was cutting adhesives with them, but they usually are a little bit smoother than mine are right now. But I love these things. I've gotten a lot of wear and tear out of them, but they're super strong. And what I love about these shears is cutting straight across a card or cutting bigger pieces or even through cardboard or packaging. These things are an absolute gem. So I have these, um, or I'll have them linked down below, but these are so awesome. I use the bigger shears and these smaller ones all the time, and I really haven't found a need for any more scissors than these two in my craft room. These have been super helpful for me. Okay. Now, the next item I want to clarify is totally personal preference. It might be one of the things that I'll tell you not to buy ever. Like, I don't usually ever tell you not to buy something or kind of bash your product. But I do want to share my experiences that I've had that aren't too great and kind of compare them with you guys. Yep, big scissors, definitely. Okay. So here is the Fiskars trimmer. Can you give a shout out to Madison? Hey Madison, happy birthday, that's awesome. Um, okay, so I have a ton of trimmers in there on the back. Um, it's in a little cubby there. And I really don't use any of them except for one trimmer. And it's not this Fiskars one that I have out here. This is one of the trimmers that I bought when I first started because I was a little bit scared of guillotine trimmers. And it's a nice trimmer for card making, don't get me wrong. But I always had trouble with this plastic piece. It never had cut me a straight line um, because it's a little bit flimsier. It kind of wobbles back and forth in there. And also this blade dulls so quickly when you're cutting thick cardstock, which I really cannot stand. I like a nice crisp cut and that was just not doing it for me. So yeah, definitely the um, rubbing alcohol. I just need to clean them a little bit. So if I'm cutting cardstock here, I'll go in here and like I it's again it's all a personal preference and I know you guys might love this trimmer but for me it's just not great because of like these fuzzies that you get on the edge it's never been a nice clean edge and I found that when I first started I was always confused on why my things weren't lining up on my card and it wasn't me it was the trimmer so that being said, one of my absolute favorite trimmers in the world is this Tim Holtz and Tonic Guillotine Trimmer. And not sponsored, nothing. This is just the only trimmer that I have found that I've absolutely fallen in love with. It's a nice compact trimmer. Yes, if you take a picture and email them, if you have something wrong with your... Oh, are you talking about the... Okay, yeah, Fiskars and Tonic, I both know, have really great customer service. So if you're having trouble with their stuff, definitely contact them. Um, it's all personal preference. But for this, I taped off a strip here just so I can have the right measurement. So yours won't come with a little yellow strip. But what I love about this cardstock is the nice little hand thing. So it keeps your hand safe, but it also keeps your cardstock in place when you're cutting. The yellow tape is just mine for measurements. Um, but it's a really nice guillotine blade. I always thought that guillotines were super scary, but they're not. Um, so this is the handle, it detaches. You also have this measurement thing that you can attach to the side so it can go a full 12 inches. I recommend starting off with this larger size and then buying a smaller, there's a more compact one. If you like that and you like to travel or if you wanna have a littler one on your desk at all times, but this cuts a full sheet of cardstock lengthwise so you could do top folding cards. So that's why I love this big one. But let me just show you, let me show you how it cuts. So this is through my stark white cardstock. It's a really thick cardstock. Now when you're cutting, you want to make sure you got it against the top edge there. Put both fingers on this and give it some nice pressure because you're holding in the cardstock. And then go straight down. And you, the quicker you go down, the easier it is to cut right through the cardstock. But let me show you. Look how smooth and clean that line is, which I absolutely love. I've never had that with a trimmer. Let me compare that. Let me grab the sheet here. I've never had it with a trimmer. So there's the Fiskars one. And there is the tonic. 
it's hard to focus on all these little fuzzies, but in real life, you can see them a lot, and it kind of like folds down your cardstock too, whereas this just straight across cuts it. So this is one of my favorite products. If I can go back and tell myself to buy one thing, it would be invest a little bit more money in the guillotine trimmer. It is a lot, sometimes it can be a little bit scary. It's not gonna like fall on your hand. When you have that blade up, it stays up. I wouldn't recommend reaching your hand underneath it. It's got these nice hand guides. It's not super scary when you're cutting and you really need that force to go down on anything. Um, but just pressing down like this keeps your hands protected on the other side. And the blade does sharpen itself. The blade, you don't need to... Nope, never gets dull. You don't need to buy any more blades on this one, which I really like. It's an investment but you don't need to keep investing in it. Whereas that Fisker's trimmer, I invested in new blades like every couple weeks because I would use it so often or like every week, honestly. So this one is a little bit more expensive, like I said, but it's totally worth the investment. I've had it for several years. It hasn't dulled. It hasn't done anything wrong and I've absolutely been in love with it. If something does happen with it, contact Tonic. Their customer service is awesome. Yeah, no, the blade is not the problem. It's it's just, for me, it was just the trimmer. Sometimes that blade has a hard time cutting through nice thick cardstocks. And if you want a good quality cardstock, I'd recommend getting a nice trimmer to cut through it as well. And that one can do several layers. I don't usually because the cardstock is super thick. Um, but if you want to, you definitely can to save a little bit of time. Okay, let me look around. Okay, there's one thing that I missed, maybe a couple. Awesome. With paper edge scissors, cut the foil. Several cardstocks, yeah. It, it mm, If it's a super thick cardstock, uh, I don't know. It doesn't like work, I mean, it works. It still cuts through really nicely. But with thicker cardstock, I tend to do one sheet. If it's a thinner sheet, you could do a ton. <laughs> yep, exactly, Donna. Um, hold down the cardstock on those little two guides. That's really the trick to not having the paper move and getting a nice smooth line. Okay, let's move on to one of the last items that I wanted to share. This one probably should have been with the adhesives, but I totally did not see it when I was doing that. So this is my Stark White cardstock. My favorite cardstock, I use it all the time. In fact, I probably should have talked about this. One thing that I didn't think that I needed, I used to use a bunch of cheap cardstock, um, but this is absolutely amazing. It's super bright white. It takes the ink beautifully. It takes Copics, it takes acrylic paints. It takes like water mediums nicely as well if you don't do too much water. Um, and it's a nice bright, bright white, which is really great for card making. The colors stand out against it. Again, you can shop at rangerink.com .ranger .ranger and use code SIMON20. <coughs> There's my dogs. But you can use code SIMON20 for 20% off if you want to try this cardstock. I teach a lot with classes, and everybody asks me what kind of cardstock this is. It's actually in my line, and I tested a ton of cardstocks, but I absolutely fell in love with this one. Nope, it's not the same consistency as washi tape. I actually find that sometimes washi tape rips my cardstock. So the cool part about the purple tape is it comes in two different widths. I actually use this stuff so much I used up the whole wide width, which I've never actually used up a full roll of tape. So you guys know I love this stuff now. Um, so this is the thinner piece. I absolutely love it. You can stick it down for die cutting. You can stick it down for masking, holding down different things on your projects. I love it for masking off like stencils, if I want to mask off an area and not have it ink blended, this really helps to do that. It's not the same thing as painter's tape. Let me tell you that right now. I've tried a bunch of painter's tape, even the most delicate painter's tapes, and it easily rips your cardstock. Yep, you can t you can put this thinner one in a tape dispenser, which is awesome. Um, a lot of painter's tapes, if you use, you have the risk of ripping your cardstock, your beautifully done project already, which is not fun. Um, trust me. Um, if you want to dull down a regular piece of tape, you have to put it on like the carpet a ton of times. And then sometimes it has fuzz and doesn't really work. This stuff is amazing. I recommend investing in it. Just peel right back on yourself. You don't even need to be super careful with it because it's a nice low tack tape. It's not like other painters tapes, even though it looks like it. The other painters tapes that I've tried, rip your cardstock. This one they had specially manufactured. So there's much less on the back, much less adhesive, so it's not going to rip your cardstock, which I really love. Awesome. 
So this purple tape has been a game changer, a life changer for me. Um, the thicker one is really nice if you want to mask off a larger area. So I recommend purchasing this. Just take the leap and do it because it really is a great product that I didn't think that I needed in the first place. I tried a million tapes, but this one definitely is the one that doesn't rip your cardstock and you can reuse it over and over if you wipe the ink off um, and reuse it, which is really awesome. What poundage is my cardstock? It's 110 pounds, so I wanted to make sure it's a really nice thick weight. So when you're doing card bases and things like that, it's gonna hold up to the different mediums that you place on your surface. And also, having a nice thick card base is really great. It kind of just sets the tone for your card. If you have a thick card base, it just means that it's nice quality. You can kind of feel that when somebody receives it, which I really like. So it's a nice quality card stock as well. Okay, maybe I have one more that I wanna share. The purple tape, oh, I always forget to mention, it's Thermoweb. Um, this is Thermoweb's Web, purple tape. They make great adhesives. This is their tape runner. I recommend anything from their adhesive line or really any of their lines. They have some awesome products. Um, but these two are game changers for me. Awesome. So the one last thing, I think this is the last thing, is an anti-static powder bag. And yes, there's powder kind of flying in the air now. But this anti-static powder bag is so awesome. I absolutely love it. And it's something that I didn't think that I needed right away, but you definitely do. So when I'm embossing, which I do quite a bit, it's a really magical kind of fun thing. Um, so you just want to add a little bit of powder on there. You can see it, especially on this dark cardstock. And then what you're gonna do is stamp down your image. So let's see, I'll put down, I'll just swipe down an image. I'll swipe here just a little bit of embossing ink. And then I don't know if you're gonna get like the exact effect that I wanted to share, but let me just kind of show you here. It just gets rid of stray embossing powders from going everywhere on your cardstock. So you can see there, that embossing powder is only where we applied it in the center there. And usually, sometimes, especially if you're embossing with white or really colored embossing powders like this one from Ranger, when you're doing that, sometimes if you have fingerprints on your cardstock or if your ink hasn't quite dried yet, it'll stick to that. Um, but if you put down, where did I even put this? If you put down the anti-static powder bag beforehand, it's going to reduce any of the static that you have there. So definitely invest in this. This is from Ranger. It's our anti-static pouch. Again, 20% off with code SIMON20 if you shop there. But it just does a really nice job at making sure that it's only in the exact place that you want it on your card, which is awesome. Hmm. Okay, well, yeah, I love this one. Um, I love the pouch rather than like there's a brush on one too. I love this one just because it applies enough to your surface. It applies, it applies a nice amount where I think the other one doesn't apply as much as you need for it to not stick. So this one has been really awesome. For me, you can tell it's well loved. I put it in a little dish to make sure there's not powder everywhere, but it's really helpful to have. And then of course, after you're done embossing, you can just brush off the powder that's left on your cardstock. Yep, you can just, you can either wipe it off with a rag, like a lint rag, or um, I use one of those Swiffer cloths to kind of wipe that off and then it'll come off really nicely. Awesome, I'm so glad you guys are loving this video. Okay. So I think that I'm going to end the video for today. Lots of you guys said the supplies list wasn't down below, so check back in just a second. I'll have all the supplies updated so you guys can see all the stuff there and purchase if you would like. I haven't replaced the bag at all. That embossing powder bag is the first one that I bought. Awesome, okay. Thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. Of course, you can hear my dogs again. <laughs> Um, I'm so glad you guys enjoyed this video, especially with all that new information. Like Trudy is saying in there, it is a lot, really good information for a beginner. Even if you are just 
in the card making world and don't really know a ton or like are still kind of looking at what to buy which I definitely was a couple years ago I was looking at a bunch of different trimmers and a bunch of different spray bottles and a bunch of acrylic blocks and unfortunately I had to spend money on things that I didn't love in order to find the things that I did love so I wanted to share with you guys what I absolutely loved some things you might think that you don't might think that you don't need but like might actually love in the long run so I wanted to do this on live so you can answer any questions in the live stream as well as just really elaborate on what I was talking about and really share why I love each thing and answer any questions that don't make sense. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Give it a big thumbs up if you did. Be sure to share it with your friends if they are a new card maker and would enjoy seeing something like this as well. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon next to it to never miss another video like this one from me. I look forward to seeing you guys here as well. Again, for more crafting and card making videos videos. When are my new inks coming? I don't really know. You have to ask Ranger. You'll have to email them their customer service and say, we want more colors. Um, so awesome. You have to go back to the beginning. If you missed anything, yeah, definitely rewind the video. There's tons of information in this one. So I hope you guys have a wonderful night. Um, have a great rest of your Sunday going into Monday, and I hope you have a great rest of your week. And I'll see you guys very soon for another card making and crafting video. Have an awesome day, everybody. Bye.